Today I'll be discussing understanding the inner critic. And I want to go into details today of, first of all, what's the function of the inner critic and why the inner critic is tyrannical, why it's abusive, and how to deal with the inner critic. I also want to give my own insights on what I believe and what I'm learning is the inner critic. So to begin, the inner critic is essentially that voice when healthy, it identifies what our shortcomings are, expresses them to us, and allows us to learn from our past mistakes and correct them in order to stay safe and give ourselves the best chance of survival. So it's an important part of our personality. If we don't have it, uh, it can be an issue. And what it is, in essence, it's the inner parent. So it's our parent self that governs us, telling us what is right or wrong. So it's kind of how we parent ourselves. Now, the inner critic is all the negative messages received from our primary caregivers, our superiors, our culture, our conditioning on what is right and wrong. So what we do is we absorb those messages, we absorb those attitudes and ways of treating ourselves, uh, and we then treat ourselves that way. We, in essence, parent ourselves the way we parent, we were parented, we govern ourselves the way we were governed early on. So according to Sigmund Freud, this is the super ego. The balance between the id, the ego, the super ego, according to Sigmund Freud in psychoanalytic theory, when balanced, creates a healthy, individual. Now, when there is a lack of compassion, when there's a lack of a healthy ego and a healthy balance between the, the ego and the super ego, the super ego in and of itself becomes overabundant, it becomes tyrannical, becomes abusive, and ultimately becomes one's own abuser in their own head. So my take on this is that the inner critic, when it is abusive and tyrannical, is actually the inner child self trying to get your attention. It feels hurt, it feels wounded, it feels threatened, and its needs are not met, right? As a child, we weren't able to express these feelings. We weren't able to stand up for ourselves, so we were forced to stuff it down. And because now it's coming to you, because now you're the parent self to your inner child, we most usually abandon ourselves, our inner child. We abandon him or her, usually the very same way that we were abandoned early on in childhood. Now, we may not realize this because when we're feeling abused and attacked by our own thought process, our own mind, our own critic, we want to run away or we want to defend or hide. But really, it's the part of ourselves, the inner child self who couldn't stand up to his or her parents coming to us because we are, in essence, the parent to our own inner child. And the more we ignore it, the more we criticize it, the more we try to defend and run away, it gets louder and louder and becomes more critical because the part of ourselves that needs us to parent them, to meet its needs or her, him or her's needs, uh, we are now ignoring her or him. So we are actually becoming our own abuser and that's why it gets louder and louder because it's trying to get our attention so we can meet its needs when it could not meet their needs early on. So in early childhood, in order to survive, like I mentioned, it had to shut down its feelings, uh, hide him or herself in an attempt from being entirely disrespected, destroyed in childhood. It couldn't stand up for him or herself. Now that it's adulthood and it's safer, this child's self starts to trust you and therefore will come to you. And what happens is, is that when a person gets triggered, usually there'll be a negative emotion. And what's happening here is that the wound of childhood is getting activated. So when that wound gets activated, there's a negative emotion. There's usually a subsequent negative self-talk. So what's happening is, is that that child self, that's that wounded self that's getting activated, it is now coming to you to get the needs met that it was not able to early on. So triggers are actually an important doorway because they allow you to uh, invite this part of yourself that has been neglected for so long in. Now, when we do run away from ourselves, when we get triggered and we soothe or we avoid ourselves, in essence, we are abandoning ourselves. We're abandoning that inner child the same way it was abandoned early on. It doesn't get its needs met. And then comes a subsequent tyrannical inner critic that starts berating you and mistreating you because it's attacking you. It's upset that you are now neglecting him or her. So the reason why this inner critic is so abusive and so tyrannical is because, like I mentioned, it's the child self that's attacking you, the adult self, and the way they were attacked. So it's kind of fighting back. And in an attempt to take back its power, to not feel so helpless, and to finally communicate its needs and get them met, it comes after you as it would have come after the adults early on. So it now sees you as the parent self coming to you to get the needs met. Um, with someone who he or she trusts. So now, in essence, that child self is trusting you. And that's why triggers are important because when you are triggered, that means that that child self is now coming to you because it trusts you. So that's a huge opportunity to now make up for the damage early on. But then when we run away from our triggers and soothe and avoid, we are, in essence, just abandoning ourselves all over again. And the child self feels more hurt because it's betrayed again, and then it attacks harder. So after a while, through repeated neglect by the adult self, the inner child becomes a part of you, 
that is attacking you. It becomes the part of you that is self-sabotaging. In essence, it sees you as the enemy, and then there's the inner critic against you. So it's attack on you. It's a way to finally express him or herself and let herself or himself be expressed and, and experienced and finally get needs met. But like I mentioned, the more we run away, the louder it gets and becomes this feedback loop. So one of the most mind-blowing things for me that I have understood about this inner critic was that when I finally stopped running from this voice, when I finally stopped seeing it as the enemy, when I finally stopped soothing or, or just stonewalling or, or even when I just enmeshed with it and it become, became part of my personality, when I was finally able to see it for what it was, it was just a child self trying to express himself, I was able to stay present with that child long enough to allow him to express his pain, to allow me to feel his feelings, to help him emotionally regulate, calm down. And once that happened, this child self felt so understood, so accepted, so validated, and suddenly it was calm. Suddenly this like critical voice stopped berating me and yelling at me and I realized it's a wounded child. And wounded children, when they get upset, they lash out. So when you finally can just stay present with yourself and communicate with this child self, what happened to you? Why did this happen? Or why do you feel this way? And why are you saying these terrible things as opposed to making an enemy out of that child self or just ignoring it? Then ultimately we can finally deal with it, integrate it and use the super ego for the function that it was designed and created to be. So how do we do this? How do we really integrate our inner critic so it's not this demonic voice in our head yelling at us whenever we make a mistake, criticizing us for every flaw we have? Now, first step is to identify with the adult self. You have to be the adult in the relationship with your inner child. If you become the child, you'll lash out towards yourself or you lash out to other people or you're cling on to other people. You become clingy or narcissistic, abusive towards others or towards yourself. So we have to see yourself as sort of two separate people. There's the adult self and the child self and become the adult self and nurture the inner child. You gotta stay present. You gotta stay present with yourself. Part of what was so damaging in childhood is that our parents were emotionally unavailable. They neglected to emotionally regulate us and to meet our emotional needs. And therefore, you need to do that for yourself. Stay present with yourself. Listen to this part of yourself like you would a child who's throwing a tantrum. Hold space for him or her. Allow her to express feelings. Uh, say the things that she or he wants to say without judging, without avoiding, without punishing. Just be present and have compassion. Feel the pain that you were unable to feel early on. Think about it. The child self is in pain, it is frozen in pain. You have to open up the environment for this child to come to you, express him or herself, and then they will feel safe to continue to do so, and then you can continue to integrate that child self. Now, the way I see it is when there is an inner critic, when there's tyrannical, abusive self-talk, usually after you get triggered, it's an opportunity to develop a life skill and to continue to nurture the life skill of compassion and self-forgiveness. So learn this skill. This is a vital skill in healing. We gotta treat ourselves better than we were treated early on. We have to nurture this child self who is extremely wounded. It's not the enemy. It's not saying these hurtful things because it just hates your guts. No, it actually wants to connect. So let's give it the opportunity to connect with yourself much in the way it was not connected to early primary caregivers uh, early on. Don't fight the inner critic. Don't become the inner critic. Uh, don't see it as the enemy. See it as the part of you that needs you, that needs your attention, needs your love, needs it to meet your needs. So let's meet his or her needs. The inner critic is vital for inner peace and balance. It's not the enemy. So like I mentioned several times, see it as a part of you that needs love, needs acceptance. And once we do that, we can integrate the child self who desperately wants your attention because clearly it did not get its needs met. And what happens when you ignore someone long enough, they become upset and angry, and then they just start picking on you. And then they do become the enemy. So let's not make an enemy out of this inner child, realize it's part of you that needs love and acceptance. And when we create the space within ourselves, that's when we are creating the invitation. We're creating that safe space for that child to show up. So not necessarily is it our job to convince the child self, to manipulate the child self. It's just to allow the space, create that inner space so that the child self feels comfortable to open up to you. And when that happens, you have the honor and the ability to be there for that child, respect him or her, be there for her in the way that the adult primary caregivers or the abusers were not there early on. I want to thank you all so very much for joining me for today's episode. Until next time, all the best.